So there are some newer splicing devices out there that a lot of people are saying they should be able to replace the Wagos, and some people are even calling them the Wago killers. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at each one of these different connectors, the functionality of them, the capabilities of them, and then we're gonna talk about whether or not these newer devices actually could be possible replacements for the very well-known Wago 221s. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here are our contenders. I've got all my Wago family sitting over here on the left. Now, of course, they also have larger ones than this. So the Wago family is larger in all the different types that they offer than the other two connectors sitting here. Then over here, these blue lever connectors, these are the ideal insure lever connectors. These are pretty new, maybe like a year, year and a half old or so. And when we start comparing these two, these do actually have some very different features on them. And then over here is the 3M Performance Plus orange and blue wire nuts. All right, so one very important factor that a lot of people wanna know about when they use different kinds of splicing devices is how much room is it gonna take in a box. So if we go ahead and take a look at the five port Wago here and take a look at its length, we are getting right at 1.17 inches. If we look at the length of the ideal insure lever nut, we're right at 1.225 inches. And then if we take a look at the length of the 3M Performance Plus wire nut, we get right at 1.023. So out of the three of them, the 3M Performance Plus wire nut is the shortest in length. But now let's take a look at the width of each one of them. So starting off with the Wago, we're right at 0.71 inches. If we take a look at the Ideal Insure Lever Nut, 0.73 inches. And then if we take a look at the widest part of the wire nut, which is the wings on each side, we get right at 0.4 four, eight, so under a half of an inch. So the width of this 3M Performance Plus wire nut is much less than both the Wago and Ideal lever nuts, and it's almost by a quarter of an inch. But overall, when it comes to what takes up the least amount of space in a box, at least when it comes to the five port connectors, then the 3M wire nut takes up less space in an electrical box than these five port lever connectors by both Wago and Ideal. Now, obviously, if I put these up next to the three ports, as you can see, we start to make up ground. And at those points, if you have less wires in the box, then it might either be a wash as far as how much room it takes up in the box. And especially if we get to the two port connectors, the two port connectors are definitely gonna take up less room in a box. All right, so now let's take a look at each one of these and how they work. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Wago 221 series, these are lever connectors where we have levers up here on top. That's what this orange is. You just flip that lever up like so. Over here, we've got ports for where wires get inserted. And what's really cool about these and makes these very DIY friendly is if we flip this over here to the bottom, you can see through that clear plastic housing and see that your wire is seated all the way at the top. So we know we've got a good connection. We can flip that back over here to the top and flip that lever down. And now that wire is connected into place. Now, if we take our ideal insure lever nuts right here, and same thing though, you can flip that lever up. I can take one of my wires, push it into that wire connector, flip it to the bottom. And again, we have clear housing on the bottom portion here to see that it's seated all the way up here at the top. Once we verified that, we can flip this back over, flip that lever down, and now that is locked into place. So here is where one of two of the biggest differences between the Wago and the Ideal are, and that's in when you're using solid wire like this one is here. You got solid and you've got stranded, but if you're using solid, the instructions specifically say you can actually just push it in and then you can just verify it again, just make sure it's seated all the way at the top, and it is. And so it can save you a little bit of time not having to flip that lever up. You can just push that right inside like so. We wanna quickly go over the functionality of this 3M Performance Plus wire nut. Now, this is not unlike a lot of your other wire nuts out there. I personally, when I use wire nuts, I like to pre-twist. But for the sake of this video, the instructions do say that pre-twisting is not required. So I'm just gonna go ahead, line my wires up like so. And it's just as easy as taking your wire nut, pushing the wires up inside of that wire nut, and then using the wings on each side and just twist it together. And so now these two wires are connected and obviously you can pull on these all day long and they just are not gonna come out of there. But one of the great features about the 3M Performance Plus wire connectors like this one here, they make the spring very flexible. So it's able to accommodate the amount of wires that it is, which by the way, is anywhere from 22 gauge all the way up to 12 gauge wire. Both of these particular lever nuts, they're capable of wires anywhere from 24 gauge 
all the way up to 12 gauge wiring as well. But what that spring is gonna do that a lot of other wire nuts don't have is since it's so flexible, it's able to accommodate those larger wires in such a small wire nut like this. And as that spring is being twisted around these wires, it's also gradually tightening down on it and it provides a very reliable and secure connection. Now, all three of these different wire connectors here are capable of using solid core and stranded wire. And that's these two right here. I've got my solid wire over here on the left and my stranded wire over here on the right. But when we talk about DIY friendliness and connecting solid wire to stranded wire, in my opinion, I have seen that this probably does a better job than the other wire nuts that I've done in the past. That being said, wire nuts just do not have anything on the lever connectors when it comes to DIY friendliness. All right, so now let's take a look at one of the added features that the Ideal has that the Wago does not have. In my opinion, there is a little bit of a design flaw with the Wagos, and that comes down to these levers on the Wago lever connector. When we go to push this into a box, a lot of times we're just fighting with the wires, we're trying to get it seated, but what can happen is, and I won't say that this happens a lot, but it is something that is possible, is that these levers are not super difficult. See how easy that just kind of flips up to that position like that? It gets caught on a wire or the box itself, gets up in this position, and it's not too difficult for that lever to get pushed up. Now it's in the up position, and with that lever in the up position, gravity can just take over and the wire will fall right out. Whereas now if we take the ideal Ensure lever connectors, we'll just go ahead and push those in, make sure they're in there nice and tight, which they are. And then also, if we take a look at the levers themselves, they are not easy to just flip up like I was able to do with the Wago. See, I can go across that and brush across that and they don't flip up at all. I actually have to put a decent amount of force before it flips up. Well, there is a reason for that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a tiny piece of clear plastic that's there on the top of that connector, right below the lever, that is actually designed to fit up into a groove that's in the lever itself. You see that little open space there in the lever? Well, when we go to push this lever down, so it's not down all the way, but it will actually somewhat snap and lock into place. Watch really quickly. See how it kind of like popped into place? And I don't know if you heard that or not, probably not, but it actually makes a little pop noise when it snaps into place. Well, that is what is keeping these levers from accidentally being pulled up. But like I said, when we go back to the Wago here, uh, it's really on the installer. It's the installer's fault that if this was to get flipped up, it's the installer's fault that that happened. A couple of things that you can do in order to make sure that that does not happen, you could take a little piece of electrical tape and wrap it around the levers so that they can't be flipped up. Or what I tend to do and make a conscious effort to do is when I go to push these into the back of the box, I actually put my thumb over those levers and until I get those wires and the connector seated where I want it to in that box, I make sure that I keep my thumb on those levers so they cannot be opened at all. So while I definitely think that this is a really cool and nice added safety feature on the Ideal, do I really think that it's a deal breaker for the Wago? Not really, because again, when it comes to electrical, you should be paying attention to what you're doing, but just be mindful of that when you are using these and make sure that everything is seated properly. Now, some other really cool features that have been added to these devices is sometimes you're needing to troubleshoot things. You wanna see if there's any voltage in the box that you're working on before you expose any type of wiring. And so if you take the Wagos, if we flip it up to this side, I don't know if you can see that little window there, but there's a little window there to where you can push a probe into there. It makes contact with the bus bar inside and you're able to detect whether or not voltage is present and how much. You can also on any of the Wago 221 connectors, if you flip the lever that is marked with the Wago insignia, if you just kind of push that up a little ways, up underneath of there is another test port where a probe can go in and test for voltage. If we take the ideal Ensure lever nuts on the port side, do you see that little notch in the plastic there? That is also a port here on the ideals where you can stick a probe in and test for voltage. Likewise, if then we flip it to the reverse side where the lever side is, and there is another window cut out in the plastic where again, you can insert a probe into that little port there and test for voltage. Now, when it comes to wire nuts, it's gonna vary on the installation and the wire nuts that are used. A lot of times it's not super safe to reach into a box that just has a bunch of wire nuts in it and trying to pull them out. But if someone is able to, and they're in a position where they can get to it, 
obviously if you're able to get underneath of the skirting here and put a probe up into the bottom here then you could get your voltage that way but typically the best way to get voltage if wire nuts are installed is to turn off the power remove the wire nut and then you'd have to turn the power back on to then test for voltage so coming from a convenience factor the lever nuts are better in that regard as far as troubleshooting and being able to detect voltage. When we compare the lever nuts and the wire nut, the capabilities of these are slightly different. The two different brands of lever nuts, the Wagos and the Ideal Ensure lever nuts, are capable of handling up to 450 volts, whereas the 3M Performance Plus wire nut is capable of handling up to 600 volts. So 150 volt difference between the lever nuts and the wire nut. And the two lever nuts are both the same in their capability as far as amperage as well. They're able to handle up to 32 amps. Now, when it comes down to pricing and looking at these different options here, of course, the prices are gonna vary by how many ports you buy, which model you buy, where you buy it from. But overall, wire nuts are always, always, always going to be the cheapest option. And I think that is a big reason why here in the United States, we're still using wire nuts a lot because they are substantially cheaper than any of the lever nut connections that are out there. Also, another factor is the quantity you buy. But then when we look at between the Wago 221 and the Ideal Ensure lever nuts, they're very close and comparable in price. But overall, for the most part, the Wagos are still usually going to edge out the Ideal Ensure lever nuts. Most of the time, the Wagos for, say, a 10-count package of them is going to edge out the Ideals by around a dollar or so per bag, depending on how many ports there are. Also, there's typically more options with the Wagos as far as quantity goes. So between the two lever nuts, the Wagos beat out the Ideals as far as cost goes. Now, this is one that I really like to use. It is basically for, like, butt joints. They're fantastic for light fixtures, fans, extending out wires because you're able to just insert one wire over here, insert one wire over here. And so it's just super easy, no crimping involved or anything like that. So after taking a look at all this, what are my thoughts on whether or not the Ideal Ensure Lever Nut and the 3M Performance Plus Wire Nut? If we take a look at all the different features and capabilities, do I really think that these are capable of replacing this overall? No, I don't. If you're just looking for price, obviously, again, wire nuts are always gonna be cheaper, but they're a completely different type of connection. And while the 3M Performance Plus wire nuts are pretty DIY friendly in terms of a wire nut, when it gets down to what the bulk of a lot of this audience is, which is DIYers and homeowners, the lever nuts in a lot of cases are just a safer, easier option to go with. And when we compare the Wago 221 to the Ideal Ensure lever nut, while the Ideal Ensure lever nut did have some really cool features and some added safety features to it, at least in my opinion, the Wago has been around for so long. It has been tested, it has been proven. Again, like we've already talked about numerous times, it ultimately comes down to you, the installer. You gotta make sure that everything's being installed properly. And if we look at it at face value and you are installing them properly, then no, the ideals do not just replace the Wagos. It's gonna really come down to you, the homeowner, the DIYer, the customer. After you've seen this video, looking at all the different features and capabilities, as to what you feel most comfortable with and which one you like better. If you're someone that really likes wire nuts, then I definitely recommend looking at the 3M Performance Plus wire nuts. I am really impressed by everything that these have to offer. Me personally, when I'm especially doing a lighter amperage install, like light fixtures or fans or things of that nature, then a lot of times I'm going to these and most of the time I'm using the Wagos just because they've been around for so long. I've used them before, they work really, really well. I do definitely like some things about the Ideals, but the Wagos are still quite a bit cheaper. They have a lot more options out there as far as capabilities and sizes of wire. So I guess if you're gonna ask me which one I would recommend, I would still recommend going with the Wagos, but the Ideal definitely makes a good argument. So again, like always, I'll have links for every single one of these connectors down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to them so you can check them all out for yourself. So while we took a look at some very good connectors, it's not always about the connectors themselves, but the install. So if you'd like to learn more about some of the most common mistakes that homeowners don't even realize they're making when installing these, and you'd like to see how they should be installed and some better practices, then check out this video right over here where I go over all of that so that you can make better connections that will last 
for years to come. So I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.